So we have a really fun beginner tutorial today. We're gonna to be looking at how to do rigid body simulations in Blender, and we're gonna be doing a classic where we have these sort of these cubes we stack up, and we have a little cannonball coming in, and I'll show you how to set up the physics. This is a fantastic beginner tutorial, very simple. Anybody can do this in Blender. Now we're not gonna be setting up any sort of fancy scene or lighting or materials. This is just teaching you how to have a bit of fun with rigid bodies. You can go ahead for any material or shaders you want on here, have fun with it, but let's jump in and make this fun and simple rigid body simulation in Blender. So we're gonna keep this super simple and let's start by going Shift A in the default scene. We can leave the default cube because we're actually gonna use it, but we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a plane and we're gonna go S and let's just go S10, scale it up by a factor of 10, make it nice and big. And then with it scaled, we're just gonna go Control A and this is also apply to scale. We're then gonna select our cube and we're gonna go S.3, so S.3 to make it only 30% its original size. And then what we're gonna do is we'll actually, to simplify things, we'll go to our modifiers and I'm gonna just pop into the front orthographic view here. And we're gonna go to our modifiers, add a modifier, search, and let's just type in array. Let's give it an array modifier, and we're just gonna drag it a little bit, so it's a bit of a gap. We just want a little bit of a gap here in between the cube. We don't wanna to go too crazy, and let's give it maybe something like eight, okay? Or, man, let's maybe a little bit less. Yeah, I think five should do fine. We're gonna go five. And then what we're gonna do is we'll duplicate, by coming to drop down, we'll duplicate this. And let's just minimize the top one. And now for the next duplicate, let's just make it zero on the X. And let's just come to the Y and let's make that 1.01. .01. So we just want a little bit of a gap here as well. As you can see, we don't want it exactly one, just a little bit over one. And then minimize it and let's come to the drop down and duplicate and then let's drop this one down and make the Y factor zero and the same thing, 1.01 .01 on the Z. And now you can see we have a slight little gap. And now we have this sort of box. So let's go ahead and come to the drop down and just apply each one of these by coming to the drop down and applying. And let's come to the front orthographic view and let's just go G and move it up till it's sitting on our plane here. You can zoom in nice and close and just make sure it's just sitting on the floor and then go G, X if you want to kind of move it till it's in the middle a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle. I'm gonna to go to my right view and just kind of move it till it's in the middle. Just something like that, there we go. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna make sure everything is selected by pressing A. Then you press P and then simply go by loose parts and then tab back out into object mode. And now each one of these is its own cube. The problem is they're all sharing the original origin point, which is down here. So if I grab this cube at the top and I rotate it, you can see that happens. So to fix this, it's super simple. We're just gonna go ahead and select all of these cubes and then press F3 on your keyboard and just type in origin to and go geometry. So origin to geometry. And now each one of them will like this. And then we're just gonna quickly tab into edit mode. We're gonna press A to select everything and we're gonna go Alt B and just give them all a bevel, a slight bevel and click. Tab back out and now we have this. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. And they're all their own individual little cubes. So. Let's now set up our um, cannonball, if you want. We're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh option, add in a UV sphere. And we're just gonna go G, move this guy over to the side. Now I'm gonna do this in my front orthographic. I'm gonna go S to scale this ball down like so. And I'm gonna right click, go Shade Smooth. And I'm also gonna go Control A and apply to scale. That's really important when we scale in object mode as Blender is gonna be looking at the distances to calculate collision. So, um, Yes, yeah, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go G, X, and move it back in the scene. And let's just come here to our timeline and we'll come to frame one. And on frame one of this cannonball selected, we're gonna, with it selected, press I, and you're gonna see it inserts a keyframe. So now we have a yellow keyframe when we press I. And then let's quickly move up to frame 20. We want this to happen really quickly. In fact, let's maybe even do frame 15. We'll go to frame 15. And on frame 15, we're gonna go G, X, and move it in really close to here and then once again we're gonna press I and now you can see we have another keyframe and this is drag these two keyframes let's press T and this is make it linear so it doesn't have the Bezier curve which will um, make it sort of like speed up and then slow down so we just want a consistent linear movement 
Now you can see we haven't made this go through the stack here because we want the cannonball itself to be dynamic. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna select the cannonball, we're gonna go over to our physics, we're gonna give it a rigid body, and we're gonna make the type, um, actually we'll leave the type as active, but we need to make it animated, okay? We will need to definitely increase the mass so it's bigger, so it's heavier, the heavier the mass the mortal effect is, but we want it to be animated up until frame 15. So we're going to come to frame 15 and on frame 15 with this animated tick, we're going to click on a property and that's going to add a keyframe for it to be animated. So when it's animated, dynamics do not apply. But then we're going to move up to frame 16. We're going to turn off animated and click on the animate property. And now the dynamics will kick in, but it'll take the inertia or the velocity from the animation. So if we go now to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see it automatically just the physics kicks in and it flies off with momentum. So make sure to save to your desktop or wherever. And let's now select our floor. Let's give that a rigid body. Let's make the type passive as it's not moving. Um, let's come here to the shape. We'll make it mesh. And we'll come here to the sensitivity and we'll make it 0 0.005 or four should be fine. And then let's just come here and select all of these cubes. Holding and shift, select any one of them. Then go and give it a rigid body. We're gonna leave it as active. We're gonna come here to the shape and we're gonna make it box. And then what we're gonna do for all of these to have that same, the same properties and modifier, we're gonna go ahead and press F3 and type in copy from. And we're gonna go copy from active. So now if we go to frame one, Make sure to save and we hit the space bar. You can see that. Boom. <laughs> How cool is that? So what you can do now, this is the cool, you can grab your cannonball. You can always tab into edit mode and you can go S to scale it and tab back out. And you can also come here to the mass and change the mass as well of the cannonball. And then go back to frame one, hit the space bar. That's really, really cool. You can also go back to frame one at any point. You can just enable the auto keying and on frame one, let's just move this guy a little bit at an angle, turn off auto keying, and now it's coming in from an angle like that, which is, I think, a lot more satisfying. As you can see there, boom. Just knocking it all out like that. And that's really how simple it is. Um, mess around with this all you want. You can, at any time, like I said, come here and mess around with things, and it should work just fine. Boom. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this simple tutorial on um, rigid body physics in Blender. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.